what is up guys thank you guys so much for hanging out on a tuesday night i mean we had some big news so i feel like uh, it was only appropriate that we uh talked about it in my opinion um shout out to you guys that are in the chat already this wouldn't be possible without you guys uh bradley williams first one in the chat what's good jags united not much not much another weird day at work but i'm kind of getting used to that nowadays jason ortiz you were just this close to being the first one in but you didn't quite make it uh this close but didn't quite make it um some people are already kind of talking about what we're talking about we're gonna be talking about the gm hire uh trent balk getting the nod as the gm um raheem morris turning down the jaguars to uh go coach out west all interesting stuff. I want to get y'all's opinion, so make sure you put it in the chat. Before we do that, Twitter, Jaguars underscore United. Instagram, Jaguars United underscore. I appreciate you guys. Um, we had a pretty big influx of followers on Instagram yesterday, and I appreciate that. That means a lot to me. I'm going to post something on the Instagram tomorrow, so um, you have my word. If I don't, you can hold me to it. I'm going to post on the Instagram. I'm going to do it. Um, you can check us out there. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel so you get notifications whenever we go live. Obviously, we have no set schedule. Um, we're just ex I'm excited to be here. Um, Charlie Boyce is not too excited about the hire. I mean, I don't think you're alone in that. Um, there is one out there to be pumped about. Preferred Rick Smith, says Christian Charles, but Urban's the man. Um, I would love the guy from the Saints organization or Steelers organization. They draft uh, talented wide receivers, says Bradley Williams. Ethan Prophet says, LOL. Ethan Prophet, you need to go to bed. Uh, James Molitor says, what's so bad about this guy? Why does everyone hate him? Um, they associate him with being with a losing team. He was ran out of San Francisco. If you don't know his career, he basically started with the Jets, went to the Redskins, and then the 49ers. Um, he was credited with the 49ers of like turning around the team in 2012. In his first year with the 49ers, he took a team that was 6-10, and and they went 13-3. and Um Basically, he was the hot commodity. He was the hot name. He was the guy that came in and made changes. But what you have to remember is this situation here in Jacksonville is nothing like the situation that was in San Francisco. Urban Meyer is the GM. Urban Meyer is the guy that is going to be pulling all the triggers, all the major decisions. We'll call it Tom Coughlin-esque. Here's what you got to remember. In the day-to-day the -day Jaguars organization during the season, you're picking up players off the practice squad. You're signing guys off of other teams' practice squads, depending on – like, let's say uh, any given week you're playing a team that has a mobile quarterback. Uh, you don't have a mobile quarterback on your roster. So you have two options. You can play one of your, like, wide receiver, wildcat-type players back there to give yourself a look, or you can go poach a mobile quarterback off of another roster. And the person that makes that decision – is the guy who usually assists the GM. Like the GM will kind of trust his other guys with those picks. And I think that's what Urban's doing with Balk. Basically saying, you go, you make the decisions, you make the picks on all those day to day things, and I will decide um, big decisions and things like that. Um, Jason Ortiz says, there wasn't anyone out there that had me pumped, to be honest. Um, yeah, you're right. Um, that's kind of what it all goes to. Um, bulk is going to be fine. I trust urban and urban. We trust. Yeah. I mean, I agree hundred percent. Look, I mean, what's happening with this team is urban is building his staff that he can get around him. Um, bulk has a history of knowing the league. He knows what's going on. He knows who can make good decisions and he probably put feelers out to a lot of different positions. And when it came back that guys like, Raheem Morris weren't interested um the thing about Raheem Morris is that he was interviewed by the Jags to be their head coach I don't know if it was just satisfying the Rooney rule or if they were actually interested but the fact that Raheem Morris is not here it doesn't surprise me that much um I know we broke down the film on Raheem Morris we looked at his kind of inability to stick to a philosophy I mean I'm sure he's going to be a good coach I'm sure he's going to be fine but the dude ran a 4-3 in Tampa, and then he came out with a 3-4 and this year in Atlanta. It's just like he never really could establish kind of like who he is, what he wants to do. And to me, that's just – I don't know. It's, it's just it, – I need I want a guy that like kind of sticks to his guns. 
and is like, you know, this is what I run. It's Reese says, I wanted Rick Smith, but I guess Balk will do. Again, not a huge ordeal, not a big deal. Bradley Rorick says, favorite OC and DC candidates as of now. All right, let me start as Stevens coordinator. Stevens coordinator, I think, I don't think I'd be, you'd be surprised to see like Charlie Strong promoted to that position. He's got just as much experience as anyone out there. I mean, are you going to go out there and get a former head coach? Um, I don't know. I mean, they may. I mean, Urban kind of has that czar title coming with him. Um, a guy like Marvin Lewis in Cincinnati, I feel like is still holding on for a head coaching job. He's really well respected in the Jaguars community, or not Jaguar, in the NFL community. Um, I don't know. I mean, a guy like Adam Gase, I know he's being rumored to be out in Seattle and other things like that for offensive coordinator. The thing is, is that Urban is going to have his philosophy on what he wants to do. He wants to spread the field. He wants to run the ball on the inside of his quarterback with his power back. He wants to get the ball in space to playmakers. Um, I don't necessarily think the coordinator jobs here are very attractive, and I'm okay with that. Um, as TJ Maxx plays says, in Urban we trust. That's the bottom line. Look, we're handing the keys to the kingdom over to Urban Meyer. He's going to do what he wants to do. Um, he's going to pretty much decide that he's going to be what it is. Bradley Williams brings up the D line coach from the Ravens is the, to be the guy to be our defensive coordinator. Uh, you're talking about Joe Colon. Joe Colon's the defensive line coach for the, uh, Baltimore Ravens. And, um, I don't know if I want Joe Colon here. I mean, he's very well respected. He has a uh, pedigree. He's been in a lot of different schools, but. Joe Cullen has had, like, a lot of run-ins with the law. Like, I'm not talking about, like, one or two even. Like, I was just kind of browsing his, like, history here. And, like, he was fired at Mississippi, at Ole Miss, after being charged with drunken disorderly conduct after passing out in a local subway. Like, subway the restaurant, not, like, the subway that you, you know, go to transport you. <laughs> Then in 2006, he got a DUI uh, with the Detroit Lions. A separate incident, a third incident uh, during the 2006 season. Um, he was driving um, in a Wendy's drive through naked. Like, I'm not making this up. Like, this is, he was fined $20,000, suspended for one game for the NFL for conduct detrimental to the league. Um, had to go to AA meetings. I mean, this guy has issues with drinking and fast food. <laughs> Two things. I don't know. Like, I'm not trying to hate. Like, I get that people are gonna <laughs> think that I'm hating on the guy and I'm and I'm taking cheap shots, but I don't feel like I am. Like, this is fact. That the guy passed out in a subway and he drove through a Wendy's naked. Um, he's coached for a lot of years. Uh, came into the league in 1990 as a running backs coach. Um, not the league, but he started coaching at UMass. Um, that's his alma mater, has been all over the college and NFL landscape. He was with the Jags from 2010 to 2012 as a defensive line coach. He has a lot of experience, not even saying the guy's a bad coach. And I guess he hasn't had any issues since 2006. And who am I to judge someone that, you know, that's been a long time that he's kept himself clean. But, you know, maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe he has, maybe I'm being too quick to judge. And, you know, I want to apologize that I'm too quick to judge him. It has been a long time. Two thousand. Think about what you were doing in 2006. A lot of you in the chat probably weren't even born in 2006. Um, me personally, I, I was a I was a junior in high school, so I was probably making some dumb decisions in 2006. And for me, <laughs> then maybe I'm just being too quick to judge Joe Cullen. Maybe he's a really good coach. Bradley Rourke says um, favorite OCDC. Kind of talking about that. Jason Ortiz says I really wanted a three four guy. Yeah, I mean, 3-4 is sexy right now. I kind of went on a little rant last night um, on our live show. Make sure to check it out on the differences between a 3-4 and a 4-3 and a 3-3-5 and what it would look like with Clavon Chazon and Josh Allen. And um, I don't think it would be a, that big of a difference depending on what they run. Jacob O'Brien says, does OC matter with Urban as head coach? I don't think so. I, I don't. I don't think so. Um, game planning calling plays i mean is urban even going to call plays i don't he's not even a guy that's ever talked about calling plays or not calling plays um i don't know it's reese says i don't know about giving him all the power what else are you gonna do we had one win last week and reese i mean i love you and i think that you're awesome man but i mean we had one win last year 
let's bring in Urban Meyer. Like, I don't care. He can do whatever he wants. Uh, Christian Charles, question mark. What on earth? I know. Um, Hove0008 says, good day, Jags United. Let's go, Jags, from Australia. You know, I've been to Australia. Um, I went there in, like, 2005, maybe. I um, got to surf out there. Um, amazing, amazing country, continent. Um, the food was amazing. The friendliest people on earth. Australia has the friendliest people on earth. The thing that will blow your mind is the amount of Asians with Australian accents. I just wasn't expecting it. It was cool. It was cool to talk to those people. The friendliest people on earth. But I've never pictured an, an Asian with an Australian accent. And they're everywhere in Australia. They're awesome people. I got to learn Aussie rules, football. I mean, great sport. Um, it's awesome. I love it. Jason Ortiz, I like the guy, but uh, WTF. <laughs> Daniel Harvey says, I'm five. Okay. If you were born in 2006, I don't know how old you'd be. I'm not a mathematician. You'd be 15, couldn't you? I mean, come on, Daniel. It's not far-fetched to think. Joe uh, Colin is a very good coach. He's loud and he has a lot of respect in the NFL circles. Okay. Jeff, I will take that. And he, I, I believe he probably is a good coach. Um, there's a lot of people that have a lot of respect in the NFL circles. I talk about Marvin Lewis has an immense amount of respect in NFL circles. Tom Coughlin, one of the most respected coaches of all time. Um, even Dave Caldwell is a very highly respected GM. That's why he was able to keep his job for so long. I mean, obviously he was horrible, but the reason why he was able to keep his job for so long is because he was really well respected amongst like owners and GM circles like that. TJ Max Play says, why won't you go interview for one of the position coaching jobs? They probably have no interest in me. I've never coached above the high school level, so I can't imagine an NFL <laughs> franchise would want me, um, to be honest. And, I mean, what would I do? I would just sit there and just try to get all these guys on the live show. Christian Charles, looks like Herbs is poaching the hell out of the Ravens defensive coaches. Yeah, it kind of seems like he's got a little thing going for Harbaugh, doesn't it? And um, I think Dilla brought this up on Twitter, which I thought was pretty interesting. Um, the fact that he's going after Harbaugh's guys. Um, Balk was a Harbaugh guy. Colin, Harbaugh. I mean, like it looks like the Harbaugh family has rubbed Urban the wrong way. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I, we'll see. Gavin Baker, just hope we can look back on this offseason in three years and be happy with our front office choices and the outcomes. Yeah, I I mean, I think that's what we're all hoping. Um, look, I have faith in Urban. And, and honestly, I like Trent Balk. I really do. I have no problem with Balk, especially for the role that he's going to be. Like I, like I talked about, someone has to manage the practice squad roster. Someone has to manage the you know COVID protocols, the injuries, the guys that are just kind of on and off the roster. Urban doesn't have time for that. And why would I mean Trent Balk, in my opinion, would be overqualified. If you think about that, if you think about that, that's what he's trying to do. He's head of the scouting department. He's head of the practice squad roster. I mean, the roster's full of all these dudes that are barely making any money, um, relatively speaking. Like Balk is probably overqualified for that. And I, I like that. I do. Um, just remember we're in safe hands with Shad having final say. That's true. And Daniel Harvey, they brings up a good point. That's something that something I have not brought up yet is Shad Khan did say he was going to be more involved. And if he is more involved, then what's the need? I mean, how many cooks do you need in the kitchen? I mean, I mean, you're looking for, like, what do you want, a home run GM hire? You got already got two guys that are making the final say. I'm sure Tony Khan is going to have a seat at the table. Um, I, I think I think it works, you know. Um, to me, coaches, players are only as good as their latest season, Kev B says. And I think you're right. I mean, just look at what happened in Philadelphia with Doug Peterson. The dude has a statue of himself. And he was fired. Um, Foles has a statue in Philly, and he's already been on two other teams since then. You're right. It's a league where what have you done for me lately? Look how the narrative of Leonard Fournette has changed. Just ping-ponged back and forth from here to there and to whatever he is. What do you think we attack in free agency? First, the O-line, safeties, or D-line? I hope we attack first offensive line. I talk about all the time. I'm not a huge fan of drafting offensive linemen. Guys like Tristan Wirfs, um, guys like who was the dude that the Colts drafted like really high, uh, Nelson. Um, those are guys that I would take. But when you start getting later in the rounds and the first round, it's like I don't trust offensive linemen at least for like three years. So I'm all about going and getting an, uh, an offensive lineman in free agency. Go get a tackle. Go get a guard. Why not? Like why not pay Trent Williams? Why not uh, pay a 
I, I mean, I know we paid Norwell and we kind of got burnt by that, but if you're going to be investing your number one overall pick with a franchise player, like Trevor Lawrence, who I think is one of the greatest prospects to ever come out, like protect him, protect him, go get O line. Honestly, I could care less about defense. Could care less. I, if we gave up 30 points a game next year, wouldn't care. I would rather score 35 points a game and win every game. Um, defenses are going by the wayside. It's sad. People are trying to just be efficient on defense, basically getting young players that can contribute on their rookie contracts or maybe getting recycled veterans that can come in and play on cheaper deals. But teams aren't investing into their defense the way that the early 2010 Seahawks did or the early 2000 Bucks and Ravens did. Like Your defense can only carry you so far in a league that allows receivers to basically push off and catch jump balls. Um, it is what it is. I think that's a big reason why you saw Ramsey uh, dealt. Do you think we can stick with Jared Wilson and Daniel Thomas? I think they're fine. I mean, that's going to be – you're going to have to get into shootouts to win with guys like that. Like, I would like to see a slight upgrade from them. Jared Wilson, I think, is okay. Daniel Thomas, I'm not sold yet, but maybe. What do you think um, – Bradley, we already got to that. Christian, they need a safety for sure. Yeah, I mean, again, that's a kind of loaded question. There's different types of safeties. There's box safeties. There's free safeties. There's nickel safeties. Um, I think what you guys mean is a playmaking safety, a guy that you see have interceptions, tackles in the backfield, set the edge, cover in space. Yeah, I would love that. But how important is that compared to your other corner? I mean, your other corner shutting down half the field. I don't know. It depends on what they do. It depends on who they hire. It depends on their tendencies. As soon as we hear who they hire, we're going to break down the film and figure out where we're at here. With the free agents this offseason, who would be on your list for possibly targeting to sign? Okay, that's a good question. Um, I kind of already talked about I would love to see offense attacked first. I want to see Hunter Henry. I like Hunter Henry. I realize there's guys like Jared Cook that might be available. Um, I realize that um, everyone likes, you know, what was it, Ertz. Um, Obviously, but I think Hunter Henry is a guy you can get on a pretty cheap deal. And I like Hunter Henry's ability to block and I like him playing in space. Obviously, he's got the health concerns, but I want to see playmakers added to this team. Um, again, I talked about left tackle Trent Williams. He would be expensive, but um, look, protect your guy. Protect your guy with the left tackle. Um, Trent Williams, Leonard Williams. Uh, yeah, the Williams brothers, even though they're not brothers. Um, you could reunite the Williams brothers with Quincy Williams, but uh, Christian, I think you're on to something here. We got a lot of money, and I don't think they'll spend it all this year. I think you'll see them proportion it out over the next two years. So I think fans may get a little like spend more money right at this year, but I think uh, they'll have a plan together for sure. Christian Charles says defensive tackle, offensive tackle, tight end, you name it. We do have a lot of needs. We do have a lot of needs. Um, it's Reese says, I totally agree with you on that, Jason. I don't know what you're agreeing with me on because I talk and rant, but I appreciate that, Reese, and usually I agree with you too. Vet lineman is the way to go. Yeah, okay, maybe that's what you meant. Maybe I should just read. Hunter Henry, yeah, it would be good. Um, Joseph Drawbon says, I hope the Jags spend on free agents so we can take best available player during the draft. Well, I mean, let's take a look. I mean, you guys want to talk about I mean, let's. I mean, I'm all for it. Let's take a look at best um, free agents. And we'll go one by one. And, I mean, what else are we going to do here? I mean, we already talked about Raheem Morris' bum. Turned down a great job. And we talked about how um, – did we talk about Warhop? Did we talk about George Warhop getting retained? Is that big news to you all? Um, I don't know. Big big news to me. I mean, you know, let's get it, George Warhop. All right, so now we're going to be looking at PFF's list. And you know me, I'm a PFF whore. PFF's list of top 50 free agents. We're not going to get through all 50 because that would just be insane. Dak Prescott, obviously irrelevant. Chris Godwin. Now, here's a guy that a lot of people uh, want the Jags to pursue. For some reason, I can't get behind Chris Godwin. I don't know what it is. It's something like in my spirit. It's nothing on film. It's nothing against the guy. Finished. I mean, the article says he finished the year in 2019 with a 90.7 PFF grade. Um, one of the best receivers in football. Um, he's exceptionally talented and versatile. Great hands. Dropping just four passes. Yeah, I mean, they could tag Godwin in 2021, and if the season's not... I mean, look, I mean, good guy just doesn't sit with me. A, a guy I would like to see, Allen Robinson. Allen Robinson, obviously, he's got some weird history with the Jags, but apparently, via Twitter, he likes to tweet saying that he would come back to Jacksonville. I don't know how far you guys want to read into that. Um, 
Bradley Williams, could you do a film study on that Penn State tight end, Pat F? Yes, Bradley Williams. Um, I would love to do that. I may forget. That's my only problem is I forget a lot. Kenny Galladay. I like Kenny Galladay. Don't know how healthy he can be. Uh, it showed us this year that when he's healthy, he's good, but he's not healthy. Um, he Again, a guy that could be franchise tagged. And um, I would like a lot of these guys. Trent Williams, a lot of money, going to be good. Anthony Harris, a guy a lot of Jags fans are talking about. Justin Simmons has probably talked about more. Levante David, Will Fuller, can't stay healthy. Shaq Barrett, don't really need edge, I don't think. Brandon Sheriff. I look, I'm a big fan of Brandon Sheriff. Like, that's a guy that um, I kind of had on my little mock-up of our 2021 potential roster. That's a guard you go after. I mean, that's a guard you go after. He's always one of the best guards. I mean, PFF talks about... He's in the 97th percentile on true pass sets and 92nd percentile ranking among positively great, positively graded plays. Um, this is what you want in a guard, and this is what you do. Um, I'm a little hesitant because PFF graded out Andrew Norwell as one of the best players ever, and he got here and, and was not that. Juju, pass. Hunter Henry, talked about, love him. Phillip Rivers, no thanks. Cam Newton, no thanks. Jadavion Clowney, no thanks. Taylor Mountain, um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Um, he's had a lot of turnover the last couple of years. Um, he's gonna, I mean, look at this prediction. Panther, I mean, they they're predicting the Panthers signing for five years, eighty two and a half million. That's going to be like one of your highest paid players on your team easily at tackle. And I know tackle is important, but whew, that's a lot of money. Joe Thune, another guy a lot of people have talked about. Look, I mean, I'm excited. Like, I think that there's a lot of there's a lot of free agents available, and I think that this is going to be a great year um, for the Jags. Look, I think by 2022, we have a pretty solid roster, and we're pretty stacked that way. Um, but, man, that's it. Nick F19 says, I'm a fan of signing Gerald Everett of the Rams. Could get him for cheaper than Hunter Henry. Henry is a better blocker, but Everett is way better in space with the ball. Um, great at yards after catch. Yeah, I like Gerald Everett. Um, very inconsistent. I mean, and it's it's fair because Hunter Henry is inconsistent with his availability, but Gerald Everett is inconsistent with his ability. I mean, some games he just totally goes off. In some games, he doesn't. I know that has to do with some of his history with the, the Rams and their offense being kind of that way. But um, I don't. I wouldn't be upset with Gerald Everett whatsoever. What do you think about trading a pick for Michael Thomas? I like Michael Thomas. I think that would be great. What pick would would be that tradable? I mean, does he go for another first round pick? I'm not trading him for a first round pick. Second, maybe, probably not. Third, I would. I'd talk about a third. Your second, second. Do you trade that for Michael Thomas? I almost wouldn't. And I like Michael Thomas, but I almost wouldn't. Um, Christian Charles says he likes Johnny Smith. I don't really like Johnny Smith. He fell off hard in the back half of the year. Was I mean, I know he's injured, but he just fell off bad. It's Reese says A Rob screwed us. Forget him. If we target wide receiver, go for Galladay. Okay. That's totally fair. And I mean, Galladay would is gonna be one of the most sought after guys. I think he stays in Detroit. I I don't know why. I just I feel like he does. I just miss him and uh, Hernsey. Reese, please let me have this. Yeah, Christian Charles wants to relive the past. I know. We all do. Daniel Harvey, I don't want Robinson. Why should we take him back now? We've made it. Have we made it, though? Because <laughs> Al Robinson has absolutely, absolutely made it. I mean, he's a beast. I mean, he's out there. He's the best player on the field in Chicago. Uh, it's, it's evident. Anytime they can get the ball to him, he makes a catch. So I'm all for it. Like, why not bring him back? Junior Jaguars Press says, what's up, guys? What's up, Junior Jags? When are you going to put out some more content, man? We're waiting on it. Christian Charles says, yo. Invisible Color says, if we pay A-Rob now, that's that'd be dumb. He was in his prime when he left. Dude, the dude's in his prime now. Bro. I mean, he's going off. All right, come on. All right, we're going to have to pull up some A-Rob stats here, aren't we? That's all right. I don't mind. I know y'all are haters, and, and I get it. And I get it. Um, But let's at least look at what we're hating on here, you know? Uh, pulling up some Allen Robinson. Um, PFR is, is always good, right? So he's going to finish the season. 2020. 12 games. Not great. I'm sorry, number 12. I'm an idiot. 16 games. 16 games started. I mean, that's all you can ask for. 151 targets. That's almost up there with his career high. 
Uh, if you look back in Jacksonville in 2016 and 2015, he also had 151 targets. 102 receptions, career high. So he had a career high reception percentage on his targets. A career high in yards in 2020. 12.3 yards per reception. Six touchdowns. I mean, the dude went off. I mean, am I blocking this here? My bad, guys. Um, he went off. And he's an elite receiver. He's going to make any team better. Um, only been in the league for, what, seven years? So he's still relatively young. 27 years old, dude. He's in his prime. Yeah, he's in his prime. Like, I'm all about the Allen Robinson train. Um, I understand the hate, but come on now. Any chance we overpay Peterson to be an assistant or coordinator on our sideline? I, I, I just don't think that Doug – I don't think the offensive coordinator is going to have that much say. I don't think the OC is going to be that integral where we'd want to overpay for him because I don't think – I think Urban's going to hand the offensive coordinator a, a play sheet. And if you've never seen a play sheet handed down by a coach – who is like that style. Like So, for example, if your coach is defensive-minded or if he's offensive-minded, whatever coordinator that is, even though if he's not quote-unquote calling the plays, he's going to hand his play sheet to the coach that says, in this situation, run these plays. I need you to run the ball this many times. He'll have players on that play sheet. James Robinson needs this many touches. Trevor Lawrence needs this many designed runs. Like, yes, they have creativity within the offense, but the playbook they're using, the tendencies and the scheme are all coming down from that coach if that's what side of the ball that he's on. But, I mean, this is what they do. I mean, their job's on the line. They're the CEO. Put yourself in that position. Are you going to leave your job up to a guy who you hired, or are you going to kind of step in? I think we're seeing that with Shad Khan now. Christian Charles says, rookie receivers take time to develop, though. I would prefer a veteran receiver this offseason. Yeah, I mean, I think you have to add a veteran receiver. I mean, just think about the possibilities of having a veteran receiver. Let's say A-Rob. Let's say Michael Thomas. Let's say Will Fuller. Let's say uh, Galladay, whoever you want. DJ Chark, LaVisca Chenault, add a running back. We talked about drafting Travis Etienne in, like, the second round. I mean, you now we're starting to culminate all these weapons around Trevor Lawrence. You sign some tackles. I don't care if you add one player to your defense. If we can score 35 points a game, which I know is a lot, we win. And you do those things, and you get it. Junior Jags Press says we should trade for tight end David Njoku from the Browns. Yeah, I mean, that would be nice. I don't know if he'll be available. I feel like the Browns are going to be on a revenge tour next year. are going to be trying to um, stash talent. Nick F., are you a fan of signing one of these guys or drafting another young receiver in a draft class almost as good, if not better, than this year's wide receiver class? I mean, you bring up some good points. I mean, the fact of the matter is you might be able to get a Jalen Waddle type player with the 25th pick. Like, I don't know. Like, it, it could be a stretch depending on which wide receivers shoot up the draft board, but potentially you could have Jalen Waddle drafted at 25 that's would be an interesting thought experiment i don't know what happens um but i don't know and this coach says okay you're correct kev b says amazing a rob built this rep with bortles then trubisky christian charles agrees with that he says imagine with him with a real quarterback yeah alan robinson has always been one of those guys that the national media has been like yeah he's really been on teams that suck and it's not fair um but he's good. Bring Robinson in, but he can't be whining. Yeah, no, no one likes a whiner. I don't think Urban will allow that. I mean, he's pretty tough. Understood. Bring back Chad Haney for backup quarterback, says Charlie Boy. It was fun watching Chad Haney. It was like that run that he had that he didn't even convert. He didn't even pick up the first down, but it was close enough to where they could pick up the first down on the next play. Just really make you think like, holy crap, Chad Haney has been in the league for a long time like I don't I can't 100% remember but what year was he in Michigan when he beat Florida in the bowl game was it like 2009 eight like six like I, I don't even know how long ago that was that was a really really long time ago uh Joseph Drawbon says does Kadarius Tony sound good as a top of the set round two I like Tony I watched a lot of Florida football this year I don't know how he's going to translate he really was only productive in college on like kick returns, screens, sweeps, the occasional take the top off the defense. 
but it's not like he dominated in that area the way that a Deontay Thompson or a Ruggs did. Um, I don't know. Like, I don't know how he's going to translate. I wouldn't take him in the second round. If he ended up falling to the third, I would consider it. But I think there's going to be a lot of value this year in the second round. Tony's explosive, which I like, but he has an injury history. And he's just a little too inconsistent on the college level for me. I'm not saying that he's not going to be good. I just don't know if I would trust him with a second round pick. It's Reese says I'd like Fitz as backup, but not overpaying for his services. Fitz. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. I'll take Minshew. The drafts of wide receivers are good in this class, and I'd rather get defensive free agency and try to get Trent Williams. Yeah, I mean, I think you're right. I mean, when it comes down to it, Trent Williams is going to be the most sought-after player in this free agency. I don't know if that means he's going to be the highest paid, but everyone wants a sure-fire tackle, left tackle, and I think he's going to be one of the first guys off the board. Look, when you're as talented as him, you that happens every offseason, and you know what? Good for him. He deserves it, and uh hope it's the best. Um, bottom line, Trent Balk, I know this is how we started. Um, I'm okay with it. Not a big deal. Not going to be something that really shakes the tree either way. It's going to come down to urban Fitzpatrick. Okay. I got you. Yeah, it's going to come down to urban and it's going to come down to his philosophy, his scheme, bringing in players. And I'm okay with it. People are quick to forget that urban Meyer has been one of the most sought after coaches for the last five years. Every time there's a opening, there's Urban Myers attached to it, especially in these big markets. The fact that the Jags were able to land Urban Meyer and Trevor Lawrence is amazing. I can't believe it. It's awesome. Um, Christian Charles says 40 viewer hype. <laughs> Let's get it, Christian. Look, it's an exciting time to be a Jags fan. Um, it's exciting. Like I, this, I didn't intend this one to be a long show. I mean, how much are you going to talk about Trent Balk? Um, I know some personal things about him that I, I don't want to get. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to get into it, but I mean, that's not a lot. Of, he doesn't have like that much of um, sway in what's happening. Like, unless you care about which players are poached from which practice squad, then it doesn't matter. TJ Max plays says, so you want to be like the Chiefs when you say forget defense. Let's just outscore players. I agree 90%. He said laughing 100 I don't I don't think anyone in 2021 is out there going, let's bolster the defense and win by scoring 14 to 10. Uh, we did that in 2017. It was fun. But the consistent thing that happens with those defenses is they don't stick together very long. Like the longest defense that stuck together, like honestly, was like the Legion of Boom in Seattle. And <laughs> that was like four years. Um Defenses don't stick around. Offenses do. Because if you have a great quarterback and you have a great coach, you can plug in receivers, you can plug in linemen, you can plug in running backs, and you'll win. That's why those positions are prioritized. That's why the Jags have struggled for the last decade and a half is because they haven't had um, that stuff. Um, hit that like button, says it's Reese. It's going to be sad if we lose Raheem Morris. The Rams are trying to get him. The, yeah, the Rams are going to get him. Raheem Morris, um, no good. Uh, Kev B says, UCF is crashing your stream again with a GM vid dropping Jason. That's okay. Me and UCF, we get along really well. There's not a lot of guys in the community that I like as much as I like UCF Jaguar, so check him out for sure. Predator says, Duval, baby. Hope you talked about his tenure with the Niners and big – of a role he played they did go to the super bowl they did and he won gm of the year and he won all sorts of awards and people thought he was like the greatest thing ever that's football though invisible colors yeah after rams lost in playoffs it's clear defense is nerfed in 2021 you know invisible colors that's one of the best ways i've heard it phrased and i may steal that and i'll try to give you credit but i like that phrase defense was nerfed 100 percent Joseph Drawbond, your thoughts on the running back situation? I kind of went off on a tangent yesterday. I'm not going to get off on a tangent today. But I think that Urban Meyer will want to add a running back early, whether it be a high-priced free agent or an early draft pick. And I know people don't like running backs drafted high, but if you can get a guy that can catch out of the backfield, he's not just a running back, he's also a wide receiver. Remember, remember, Urban Meyer won a national championship. And you know who his running back was? Ezekiel freaking Elliott. Okay. One of the best running backs to come out in a while. 
So it's not like he won <laughs> with his innovative spread the field. He did, but he had a really good running back running between the tackles. Um, I can't imagine Urban's just rolling into the season thinking that James Robinson is going to be the only guy he turns to to run the ball. He's going to at least get someone else in here, as much as I love James Robinson. Never seen a high-flying offense in my 26 years as a Jags fan. It's time. I'm trying to think. I mean, um, 99. I mean, wasn't 99 pretty high-flying? I mean, I want to say it was. I mean, when the Jags had, like, Mark Burnell and Fred Taylor and Jimmy Smith and Kyle Brady and Keenan Cardell and guys like that. That's some, I mean, that was some pretty high-flying offense. Don't give me credit. It's not a joke, and I'm not a writer. It's not a joke, and I'm not a writer. Invisible Colors, you should be a writer. You should be. Jigsaw Singh says, do you think Trevor starts day one or should we get Alex Smith as a bridge? Good question, because typically you do bring in a bridge quarterback, but I think Trevor Lawrence will be a Baker Mayfield, Kyler Murray type situation where he starts day one. And I'm here for it. I'm glad. I hope it does happen. Um, I think Minshew will be the backup. I think Minshew's been in the league long enough to where he's earned the title like veteran and not in like the sense that he's been in the league a long time but in the sense that he knows what he's doing and he can come into the game and win um i like it keep Minshew around i mean he's a good guy to have on the on the roster he's a good look if anything ever happened to lawrence i mean lawrence is going to be running the ball a lot probably over 10 times a game if he needs to come out for whatever reason and maybe urban wants to bring in Minshew for just a change of pace type of situation there's no better guy I'd want to have than Urban than than Gardner Minshew because he's not going to turn the ball over. Um, he's going to take a sack instead of throwing an interception. He can run the ball if he needs to. He's pretty accurate. Um, he likes to throw it to the good receivers. So let's keep Minshew around. I mean, what are you going to do? Trade him for a fourth or fifth round pick? I mean, come on. I'd rather have a decent backup to be honest. Christian Charles says he didn't watch football back then, but he was a fan. That's fair. I was pretty young as well. Aaron Jones from Green Bay, baby. Get it. Uh, get him urban. Yeah, that would be good. Couldn't stream in the 90s. Yeah, that's true. Look, I think I'm going to cut it off there, man. I appreciate you guys being here. I didn't anticipate this being a long show um, just because I didn't have a lot to talk about with um, Trent Balk. Uh, he is what he is. He's a guy that knows how the NFL works. He's been in the league for a while, and he knows how to manage a practice squad. He knows how to manage a team here and there. Um, not going to move the needle too much. It's all going to come down to urban. It's going to come down to Trevor Lawrence and those types of situations. Um, appreciate you guys being here. Make sure you follow and subscribe, whatever it is that YouTube does nowadays, um, so you get notifications. Probably going to do shows more. I mean, I'm, I, those of you that followed the stream for a long time know um, my actual work schedule frees up in the off season, so I do a lot of <laughs> more shows. Daniel Harvest says, sounds like a bird, hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully you're talking about Trent Balk and not me, but I, I like that. Thanks for – hey, you guys are the best, man. Love you guys. Look, we'll, I'll probably be on tomorrow or the next night. I'm, I'm having a lot of fun doing this. You guys are awesome. There's Jags news happening every day, so we will be um, stayed up to date. Look, thank you guys so much. You guys are the best. Love you. If UCF's doing a show, uh, go check him out. Um, as always, go Jags.